Due to being the most powerful console of the 6th generation, as well as having architecture most closely resembling PCs of the time, the original Xbox would commonly receive ports of PC games that no other 6th gen consoles would get, one of those games being the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Like many other PC games ported to the Xbox, compromises had to be made to get it running. The draw distance is slightly shorter, textures are of lower quality, the frame rate can become choppy in busy areas, and, most infamously, the load times are longer than HORSE DONG! You may be thinking that aside from technical impressiveness, there isn't much to talk about with the Xbox port aside from it being inferior to the PC version. However, there are some interesting differences and quirks with the Xbox version that most people don't know about. In this video, we'll be exploring these differences and quirks that make the Xbox version special. So, let's get started. For fuck's sake! The most infamous aspect about the Xbox port of Morrowind, which came to light a couple years ago, is that whenever you were playing the game, the Xbox would sometimes reboot itself during gameplay without the player knowing. Since the Xbox only had 64 megabytes of RAM, Morrowind was a very memory intensive game. To simplify the porting process and to prevent the Xbox from literally exploding, the Xbox would sometimes reboot itself during a loading screen whenever it was running low on memory, which slowly got used up as you played the game. This is why the loading times would sometimes take longer than usual to finish when you were say, fast traveling or going through doors. Morrowind wasn't the only game to reboot the Xbox during gameplay. While not always used for the same reason, some other games would reboot the system during gameplay as well. Regardless, I have to give props to Bethesda for using this very neat trick to help get Morrowind running on the Xbox. <laughs> The PC version of Morrowind has 11 loading screens, all of which consist of various creatures you will encounter throughout Vardenfall. I've always liked how these loading screens look, since we got to see these creatures' concept art mixed with their final 3D renders, which makes for some neat aesthetics and visuals. While developing the Xbox port of Morrowind, Bethesda figured to add in more loading screens for you to look at, since, well, you were going to be looking at them for much longer. How many loading screens does the Xbox version have, you may ask? 20? 30? 50? Nope. It has... 81 TOTAL LOADING SCREENS! 70 more than the PC version! However, all these loading screens have something that is lacking from the PC version entirely, and that would be tips. There are 80 total tips that come from these loading screens, one is repeated for some reason. Three of them shows the game's controller layout and 77 of them are standard tips that give out information explaining mechanics such as races, birth signs, and trading. Some of the tips, such as this one, are such a given that even Patrick would go, Well, no shit, that's just common sense. But some of these tips actually give you decently hidden information, like how the amount of health gained in a level up is a tenth of your endurance stat. Or how if your character goes to jail, there's a chance that their security or sneak skill will level up. I didn't even know that until doing research for this video. As a whole, these tips can be quite helpful for new players, especially since buying the Xbox version nowadays often means you won't be getting the instruction manual. Although, if you're playing this version on the Xbox Series X, you might have a difficult time fully reading these tips since the loading screens are so fast. Man, how far technology has truly come. That's right, we're gonna cheat. Morrowind on the Xbox has three cheats not available on the PC. This doesn't really make up for losing the best cheat device a game can have, but it's better than nothing. Although these cheats are pretty unimpressive, with these cheats just consisting of restoring your health, magicka, or fatigue. San Andreas cheats, these are not. Strangely enough, the cheat doesn't instantly refill the resource of your choosing, but rather refills over time pretty quickly, so long as you hold the A button after inputting the cheat code. It will even keep refilling when playing the game, although switching to a different sub-menu will cancel the process. 
Your preferred resource bar will also stop refilling if you stop highlighting it within the menu, but highlighting it again will continue the process. Overall, not the most interesting selection of cheats, but they can be pretty helpful if you're willing to throw away your honor and integrity as a gamer. But enough about some boring ass cheats, let's talk about something a little more interesting, like glitches. The Xbox version, despite fixing some bugs from the PC version, also introduces some of its own. However, all the glitches, except for one, I am about to talk about only happened in the first version in the game, which can be hard to play since the Xbox Store only sells the Game of the Year edition and newer Xbox systems automatically will run that version via backwards compatibility. So in order to even get the footage, I had to find a raw, I mean buy a totally legit copy of the first version of Morrowind to play on my OG Xbox. I mean look, I'm holding it in my hands right now! You can give yourself an infinite amount of alchemy apparatus by acquiring two of them and then going into the potion window to click on the apparatus three times. Once you've done all that, exit the window and the apparatus should be duplicated. Don't you hate it when you pick up something and you become encumbered, meaning that you have to use up an item or drop something? Well, no worries, as you can use not one, but two glitches to move at 0.1 mile an hour instead of 0 miles an hour. One way to do this is that when you go into sneak position in third person, your character will ever so slightly change position if you try to move and then stop. Repeat this process and your character kinda sorta starts moving. The other way to do this is to pull out a weapon, swing that weapon, and quickly move one side when swinging that weapon. If done correctly, your character will move backwards a bit, with some variation on movement depending on race. Items spawned by starting a quest can be duplicated, specifically quest items spawned in a container. All you have to do is keep asking about the quest item and the item will keep spawning. How this didn't get caught in testing is beyond me. The final glitch I will be mentioning is also the most interesting, as this glitch gives any NPC of your choosing IMMORTALITY. If you hold your attack to fully charge it up, then switch from your weapon to a probe via the inventory menu, you will attack them with a probe and if done right, all of their health will be gone, but they don't die. And both of you go into hand to hand combat, but no matter what weapon is used, they will not go down. Dagothur and Vivek may be gods, but they're complete pussies compared to this guy, who will probably live past the moment the song implode, which will result in a very sad, lonely existence. You probably noticed that most of this video so far has been me talking about stuff the Xbox version has that the PC version doesn't. So let's switch things up. Stand, it's gone. Uh, what? It's gone, it's all gone. While the vast majority of the game's content is present, some features didn't make the final cut. The most glaring cut is the absence of the Morrowind construction set. Bundled with Morrowind back in the day, the construction set was a set that allowed you to modify and edit the game to your liking, adding basically endless replay value to this game. Console commands via the console were also removed, but seeing these features removed isn't too much of a shock, seeing as pretty much no console games, at least at the time, had these features due to console limitations. Another feature absent is being able to leave notes on the map, which served as a way to mark locations like certain caves you completed or out of the way NPCs you want to talk to. This feature being gone can make navigation throughout the world as well as keeping track of certain locations more difficult. Lastly, this feature was less so removed and more so neglected to be added in. When the Tribunal expansion first came out, the developers added in some quality of life improvements that improved gameplay such as enemy health bars and the keyword search function. Where you could search keywords in your journal for more immediate access to the information you were looking for, instead of flipping through pages to hopefully find what you were looking for. For some reason, in the Game of the Year edition, which added the expansions and the quality of life improvements to the Xbox version, the keyword search function was nowhere to be seen. Why though? 
Did they run out of time? Was there just so much data on the Game of the Year disc that they couldn't squeeze in just a bit more code? This was actually a point of criticism in the otherwise positively received Game of the Year edition, and is a sore spot on an otherwise solid attempt to give Xbox players the expansions and features they were missing out on. Speaking of the Game of the Year edition... Marty, I'm bored! I'm, I'm gonna kill you! The Dark Brotherhood plays a major role in the story and gameplay for Morrowind's first expansion pack, Tribunal. In fact, they're key to even get the Tribunal questline started, as it will only start if a character gets attacked by the Dark Brotherhood after resting. On paper, you'd be hard pressed to really see a problem here, but but Bethesda was quite lazy with their implementation in the base game, as if the expansion is installed, the Dark Brotherhood can attack your character at any level, including level 1. Despite the assassin somewhat scaling with your character's level, they will always be wearing the second best light armor in the game, only being beaten out by glass armor. Because of this, if you kill one, you can take the armor to either keep it or sell it, this oversight breaks an already flimsy economy and balancing system for armor as you can get thousands of gold for selling it at level 1, or have really good armor which trivializes many lower tier enemies and messes up the armor progression system, as you will probably be hanging on to this armor for a long time. These early attacks also don't make much sense narratively. Why is the Dark Brotherhood attacking some no-name citizen that had just been released from prison? Did the leader of the Dark Brotherhood look into a crystal ball and go, Hey, that's the Neverine! Boris, I have a job for you! It's unfortunate how the Dark Brotherhood has, was thrown into the base game so sloppily, ruining the already flimsy early game balance. When the Tribunal expansion came to the Xbox via the Game of the Year edition, Bethesda knew they had to be a bit smarter about the implementation of the Dark Brotherhood, since you couldn't enable and disable the expansions. So their attacks have been delayed, they now cannot attack you until level 6. While arguably still too low of a level, this is a definite improvement that happens to work better both narratively and gameplay wise. I would say this is one of the very few occasions where the Xbox port actually outdoes the PC version. Of course you could always use mods to disable the expansion at low levels, but the former is a no duh and the latter is inconvenient. 50,000 people used to live here, now it's a ghost town. This change is found in the second and All final of expansion of Morrowind, works. Blood Moon. There's an area called Raven Rock, which is basically empty at first. However, when you start the main quest, the area goes under construction, and the more you progress, the more complete the construction job becomes. Once complete, Raven Rock becomes this huge, sprawling town that dwarfs the size of most cities in the game, at least in the PC version. The Xbox version of Raven Rock is severely cut down. Several houses are missing, and the walls around the town are also absent. The PC Raven Rock had about 19 buildings and a boat that you could enter. The Xbox version of Raven Rock has only 9 buildings and the boat. Raven Rock is unique as it is the only town in all of Xbox Morrowind to be cut down in size. According to USCP.net, Raven Rock was cut down to save on disk space. And with that, covers basically all the differences I wanted to cover. Of course, this video doesn't document every little difference with the Xbox version, and if I missed anything noteworthy, comment down below. All that being said, I very much admire the work Bethesda put into making this game work for the Xbox. And even with its drawbacks, it's still Morrowind at the end of the day. This port was how I and many other people first played this game, and I don't regret all the hours I sunk into this version of the game one bit. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed the video, and have a nice day. Demolition God 64 out.